This is a continuation of seven steps to learn the scriptures, and this video will be step number four under study, but in particular context. There are three words to start with C that help uh, one to rightly divide the word of truth to get the proper interpretation from the interpreter of the Bible, the Holy Ghost. Comparison, I've gone through comparison, and this one will be under context. This is just good old common sense, the context. If a person's honest, they will uh, keep the uh, statements of a person within their context. Dishonest people will rip things from the context to make something say what they want it to say. A text without a context is a pretext. It's a pretense. Of course, we know the news industry makes a living at distorting the news, at lying about the news, by ripping things out of context. And here's, the, here's a very simple illustration. You may have heard this before, where a fellow one time uh, didn't know where to read in a Bible, and he prayed and said, Lord, would you please show me something in your Bible? And he opened a Bible, flipped it open, put his finger down, and he read the passage, Judas went out and hung himself. Now, of course, that would kind of ruin a person's day, uh, and But this individual, you know, uh, he said, hmm, hmm, well, what can I get from that? He said, Lord, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not so sure about that one. Uh, I'm going to do this again. And so he uh, closed his Bible, opened it back up, uh, and it, where it fell, he put his finger down. He read a passage from Jesus Christ. It says, go thou and do likewise. Well, that sure would ruin a person's day. Uh, but this person was, uh, you know, okay, three strikes, I'm out here. Let's, let's try a third strike here. I got three strikes. I'm up to the plate. Lord, would you please show me something in your Bible? And uh, he opened the Bible the third time and uh, put his finger down, you know, and, and he found, uh, what thou doest, do quickly. Now, two of those three statements were direct statements from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, to rip those out of the context, uh, this individual might uh, have a problem. So that's uh, an absurd example of uh, that. Um, but I'm going to go with John chapter 6. If you have the outline in front of you, or beside you, or around you, or wherever you got it, or if you don't have it, uh, I'm going to give examples of keeping a passage within its context. And I'm going to focus on John chapter 6, probably this entire video, because there are approximately a billion people uh, that are relying upon a misinterpretation of this passage uh, for their hope of heaven. And in John chapter 6, uh, you know, at the beginning of the chapter in John chapter 6, the Lord uh, fed 5,000 beside women and children, uh, 5,000 men beside women and children. And this is uh, one miracle that the fake evangelist on Christian television will never do. And then he, and he starts talking about manna and bread. Okay, and he talks about himself being the bread of life in John 6, verse 48. I am that bread of life. Uh, the Roman church uh, will rely upon, of course, the Dewey Reams translation of John 6, 53 to 56. For the mass occur, where they uh, believe that they are crucifying Jesus Christ again. Uh, and when the, uh, you know, almighty priest uh, hold, holds up a cracker, a wafer, and says, hocus pocus dominocus, uh, it, it, you know, it turns from the uh, cracker, the elements of a cracker or wafer, uh, to the body of Christ. And the same with the fermented hooch turns into the blood of Christ. John 6.53. Now, if you limit it to just these four verses, you can see how a person can be deceived. But context will overrule uh, that false interpretation, which gives a false hope. And in fact, enslaves people to a religion. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye 
eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Now, if that's where you stop, just like the media will rip something out of context in order to lie, to promote a lie, to deceive, you can see, oh, okay, uh, but of course we got many problems here. Did Jesus take a pocket knife out? You know, uh, and and whack off a piece of his finger and say, you need to eat my flesh? No, he didn't do that. Did he take that knife and and uh, cut his finger and say, uh, here you go, drink my blood? Drink my blood. Uh, no, he didn't do that either. Uh, the false doctrine of transubstantiation is a deceptive ploy to hold people into a system. Okay, now often what I do when I come across an idea that is strange to me, uh, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Now, okay, let's see, let's say that Jesus was actually in the, cur- the encouragement of drinking his literal blood. Well, the problem with that is that three times in the Bible... In Leviticus 17, and in Genesis 9, verse 4, and in Acts 15, the Bible says that we are not to drink blood. So Jesus would actually be promoting something against the scriptures, and he came to fulfill the scriptures. So since that does, I would say, cause a problem, maybe a person needs to go back to the drawing board and try to figure out what the Lord Jesus was actually saying. Now, in 57, it, all a person has to do is read the next verse, and your answer is right there. Often, if you deal with somebody who uses a passage as a proof text, Uh, Go with them to that passage and read five or ten verses uh, forward and past, and you might discover the exact opposite of what that person is promoting. So in verse 57, it starts off with as. So we have an analogy. Two little amazing words that teaches you more scripture are the words like and as. Analogies, similitudes, parables. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. The Lord Jesus right there within that context gives you an analogy. As I live by the Father. Did, question, did those people witness the Lord Jesus Christ eat the Father? Well, no. No, no, no. How did he live by the Father? Well, it was clearly a spiritual sustenance. He was speaking spiritually. And as we keep reading, when you get down to, well, verse 58, I'll read 58 because it's a completed sentence or thought. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Okay, so spiritual sustenance. And then he says in verse 63, he says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The Lord Jesus knew that when he made this shocking statement, cognitive dissonance probably set in, and they probably even, their mind was so fried in verse 56 that they didn't even hear verse 57, or some unclean spirits caused them not to hear verse 57, the explanation, the analogy, 
as I live by the Father, so he that eateth me shall live by me, spiritually speaking. And he gave them a second witness in verse 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But in verse 60, it says, many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear that? Who can hear it? If you uh, read a hard statement from the Bible, are you going to run away or are you going to ask the author to explain it? Now, verse 61, Jesus, it says, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said, that, he said doth this offend you? <laughs> did, did I offend you? And then it's like, did I offend you? Oh, I'm sorry for offending you guys. Oh, if there's anything I don't want to do is to offend you. I mean, it's like here the Lord gave a shocking, hard statement idea. Uh, and, and then they overlooked his analogy and it's like, okay, I'm going to add to it. Verse 63, he says, what? And if you see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? <laughs> huh? You mean, me? you would just take off for right now? He said, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And then it, the next statement says, But there are some of you that believe not, many of the disciples. And, and of course, one of the disciples was Judas Iscariot. And, it, and it, here you would tend to think, okay, maybe the Lord's going to give some further explanation for them because they were offended and try to win them back. The passage says, For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. He's going to explain that further. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. And then, sadly, the only 666 in the New Testament, okay, in this context, 6 chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 66, and in the Old Testament, you have a chapter 66, verse 6, that would be in Isaiah, but this one says, coincidentally, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him, and uh, notice the Lord's response, then said Jesus on the 12, will you also go away? Guys taken off? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, Peter responded properly. When you come across a difficult doctrine, a strange doctrine, a hard saying, maybe something that would go against your upbringing or your thoughts and opinions or what you were taught? Are you just going to run away from the Lord Jesus Christ, run away from the Bible? And uh, Now, Simon Peter, he answered right. He said, where are we going to go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You see, there's the priority. Right there's the priority. He didn't understand what he was saying at the time. It doesn't, it doesn't appear that he understands, but he did take what he understood, you're the Christ. You're the Son of God. And uh, knowing that, and knowing that God has e infinite understanding, Psalm 147.5, uh, then I'm just going to believe what you say. Uh, I may not understand it, and maybe in due time you'll explain it to me. And then the Lord told them something else. I mean, it wasn't like he sat them down to explain in detail. He, he gave them a hard saying, and then he threw in a question of a hard saying. Well, I just might have sent up to heaven. <laughs> okay. And then he said, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? And then the narrative says, He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. 
And people still have a hard time with that statement today, that question. Was he speaking literally? He most certainly was. One of those 12 apostles was a walking, talking devil. And let that set in for a while. I mean, the Lord, <laughs> he gave a hard statement. He threw another one on top of it, and then he capped it off with a third one. One of you is a devil. And Pete's like, huh? I don't know about that, but thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. At least he stuck with what he knew. <laughs> And people are still shocked with that in verse 7. And some foolish you know, people will say, Oh, Judas lost his salvation. <laughs> he was a saved devil? Jesus Christ was speaking literally. Judas Iscariot was a devil who shape-shifted to appear to be man, and he was so good at it, a counterfeit at it, that living with him for three and a half years, none of the apostles knew it. And Paul backs this up in 2 Corinthians 11, 4. He says, eh, no marvel, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. I wonder if your Christian hero or if maybe your political celebrity may not be what you think it is. But the whole idea of the mass occur and transubstantiation. I was talking to one of these uh, Romanist, and uh, he thought I was a uh, heretic. He would listen to me on the radio, and he would listen to Just Get Mad. <laughs> and uh, we were chatting, and uh, I mean, uh, we could kind of razz each other a little bit. And so I asked him, I said, do you, do you, really, do you really believe that that wafer turns into the literal body of Jesus Christ and you eat him <laughs> like a cannibal. <laughs> and when I put it like that, it, it sort of kind of embarrassed him briefly, and he reached down for his Catholic manual, and he said, yes, I do. I said, oh, okay, okay, okay. I said, do you really honestly believe that that fermented hooch, you know, Christian Brothers Distillery, <laughs> that um, when uh, the, the priest holds it up, and, and good to the last drop, uh, holds it up, it actually turns into the literal blood of Jesus Christ, and you drink his blood like a vampire? Again, it sort of kind of, you know, uh, temporarily got him. Uh, but then he reached for his uh, Catholic manual and blindly said, yes, I do. Even though <laughs> Jesus clearly said, as the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. And I pretty much can guarantee that that gentleman never even read that verse and never even asked the Lord about it. So this first point is that a context without, a text without a context is a pretext so when Jesus is, gave this hard statement, we need to read it within its context and recognize that the Lord Jesus Christ clearly said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life.